What's going on guys, Flyby Simulations here, and boy have I missed saying those words for the last month and a half that I've been out of this YouTube business. Now for those of you wondering why I haven't uploaded in so long, stick around to the end of this video or you can join my Discord channel which is linked down in the description section of this video to gain a little bit more insight about what Flyby Simulations is all about and more. But today, for this video, we're going to be checking out everything there is to check out about the Phoenix Sim A320 whose release is imminent for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So Amir from Phoenix Sims official blog has now broken his sort of vow of silence and has provided us with a rich feature list as well as a official price for the aircraft. And boy, do I have to tell you that that price is very, very good. I mean, it's probably the best price to value ratio I've seen in the flight simulation community thus far. And I've been in this community for the last seven to eight years. So it's pretty exciting stuff. So we're going to be checking out all of that in today's video. Now before we get started, it would be great if you guys could give this video a like, maybe even subscribe to the channel and also hit that little bell icon or notification icon so you guys can stay notified every time I upload one of these videos or a tutorial video or cinematics and more flight simulation stuff. So it would be great if you guys could do that. Anyways, with that all said, let's jump into all of the latest news we know about the Phoenix Sim A320. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to be working our way systematically throughout the entire blog post on the official Phoenix A320 blog posted by Amir, but I know most of you guys are here to check out the price of this aircraft. So without further ado, the price of the Phoenix Sim A320, which is very imminent, very soon coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator, is going to be just 49.99 pounds. And that, in my opinion, is fantastic news. For those of you wondering over on the other side of the pond, that comes to around about 60 US dollars. Now, that's already better than the PMDG-700, uh, sorry, uh, PMDG-737-700 that was just released, which came in at about 75 uh, US dollars or something like that. And this is fantastic news. This is probably, as I said, one of the best value for money aircraft I've seen in the flight simulation world thus far. And I've been in this sort of uh, market or industry, you could say, for the last seven to eight years. So that is saying something. Amir further went on to say that they're not adding any exclusive, excluding local taxes or any of that. It's just 49.99 all inclusive, which means that if you're living in different parts of the world, we see these um, comments a lot on different uh, flight simulation forums and groups and Reddit threads that some people living in Africa or some people living in Asia or, um, or uh, South America or something like that have high taxes for these aircraft that are being shipped all around the world. And uh, this aircraft promises that there's going to be none of that nonsense. It's just going to be 50 pounds all inclusive. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so now that we have the uh, pricing out of the way, let's discuss some of the incredible features that have been mentioned by Amir on the official blog post. Now, just so you guys know, I'm also going to be leaving an official link to the uh, proper blog post that you guys can read down in the description section of this video if you guys prefer to do that. This is just to basically talk about some of the features and create some sort of discourse in the comments section just so we can actually start talking about this aircraft and hyping it up among the community. So first things first, Amir went on to say that the A320 is now at the end of its beta phase. Over the last few days, they've circulated the first release candidate internally, which means the release candidate is ready to go. And as long as um, most of the bugs and most of the big sort of snags have been figured out by the team internally, as well as the beta team, this aircraft should be coming to our sims very, very shortly. Moving on, Amir also said that now things look stable and representative within the aircraft, which will serve this aircraft as an excellent baseline for them to move forward uh, to the next phase of its journey, which includes post-launch and beyond, where they intend to robustly support and continue improving on the product to further enhance it. Now, this is pretty common with most payware developers. I'm not going to give them any extra credit for this just to hype them up. Most payware developers do support the uh, product that they launch in lo uh, long term, but knowing the Phoenix A320 team and their support and their sort of dedication to attention to detail, uh, I would expect that this aircraft will be getting multiple significant improvements over time. Now, Amir has also said that apart from just the system simulation and the overall flight model of the aircraft, the Phoenix team have highly focused on creating an overall amazing customer journey and experience for the customers that eventually purchase this aircraft. To be specific, Amir was talking about things like seamless and synchronized real-time boarding. In the Phoenix, for example, all we have to do now is to import our flight plan to our EFB with one click, and there's no file downloads from Simbrief or anything here. If you guys didn't know previously, you had to download specific file types from Simbrief and place it into a folder prior to launching your sim. None of that nonsense is required now. All you have to do is just to load into your aircraft. The Phoenix A320 is directly calibrated with both Navigraph for your charts, for your aerodrome charts, as well as Simbrief for your official flight plan. And then you can basically populate all of that information into your M 
MCDU and get ready with your flight. You can also choose whether you'd like to board in real time, quickly or instantly. The A320 will take care of the rest. Fantastic stuff. A lot of what you have to do with the MCDU and the, for example, in PMDG, you have to go into FS actions and configure different things. The Phoenix A320 is trying to create an experience out of it. Like in real life, you wouldn't have to do the boarding of the passengers yourself, or you wouldn't have to do the catering and the baggage loading yourself. Those actions are performed by the ground staff near the aircraft. So all of that stuff is now simulated with this aircraft. And that is really pushing leaps and bounds ahead of anything I've seen so far in the flight sim world. Now, for those of you wondering whether the customer journey or the experience that Amir was talking about stops just here, it doesn't. It so doesn't. And there's so much more stuff to talk about, and it's very exciting as I was reading through this blog. Number one, Amir says that you get something called a preliminary load sheet from your SimBrief flight plan. So as soon as you import that flight plan onto your EFB, a company message will arrive on your MCDU's AOC messaging system that you might have seen on the Fly-by-Wire A320. They're trying to sort of roughly incorporate that over there, uh, with which has a preliminary load sheet, which includes various weight and balance characteristics about your aircraft, um, directly sort of taken from your flight plan and injected into the simulator, such as your cargo and your fuel and your passengers and so on. As you begin your data entry, all of the different airport operations around you will happen passively, such as the fuel truck arriving and the jetway connecting to your aircraft and boarding begins and, you know, catering happens on the side and the baggage loaders are doing things, everything, nothing you need to work on. But there are a few things that in real life pilots do that now you're going to have to take consideration off, such as making sure to turn on the no smoking signs and switch off the seat belts when the fuel truck arrives because uh, according to standard operating procedures, you're supposed to have your seat belt signs off in the aircraft when fueling is in progress. Once the refueling is complete, you're also going to have to turn the seat belt signs back on and the no smoking to auto. Um, all of these things are new considerations you're going to have to keep and you're also going to have to keep an eye on the clock because um, according to company procedures, you're going to have to be on time when you depart and all of these things add a whole new layer of simulation that we've never seen before and I hope this is a trend that continues with future airliners that come into the Microsoft Flight Sim world. So definitely, definitely go check out the official blog post linked in the description section of this video. So to cut the storyboarding short, as Amir mentioned, uh, this sort of thing is persistent throughout the flight. You can send out messages for diversions, which will be received by your airline's OPS center and acknowledged pulling into the stand. The aircraft will also handle deboarding for you, so you don't have to do anything. Just set your parking brake, turn the engines off, and the jetway will automatically connect or the air stairs will connect if you're on a remote stand. All of that stuff is done automatically for you. These kinds of features and details go a long way in uh, Amir's eyes. It adds to the simulation of performing crew duties and to the immersion of flying the aircraft, which Again, I can't speak highly enough, and I really hope that this aircraft doesn't let me down in any way. The price has been wonderful. The system simulation and the system depth we're seeing is wonderful. I hope it doesn't sort of suffer in, in a big way in some other area that we haven't foresaw so far, such as the performance or something like that. I'm sure Phoenix are doing a good job, but I really, really hope it's good. It's, it's honestly too good to be true right now. It's honestly better than the FS Labs or whatever I've seen of it so far. So very, very excited for this. All right, so with all those other features discussed now, let's move on to some of the visual components of the aircraft that have seen a little bit of polish, especially the cabin, which of course is fully modeled in this aircraft, as well as the cockpit. So uh, first things first, overall, Amir says that visually the aircraft has had plenty of polish work done to it, and they've added some cool stuff along the way. This is particular to the flap shake animation. It wasn't something that they had planned, but they're happy that little accidents do happen along the way, and they've taken customer feedback into account and incorporated this into to this aircraft. Sitting behind the wings on approach with flap 3 or flap full configuration in this Airbus A320 now looks just that much more correct, which means we're going to see certain random vibrations and stuff along the way as well. Speaking of the cabin, they've also said that there is going to be a fully modeled cabin within this aircraft. Yes, a proper full cabin. Yes, you can also open the cockpit door and go for a walk through it so you don't have to go into the config files to adjust the camera views and so on. Yes, the seatbelt signs also work. I mean, I've never seen this in any other aircraft. Maybe you guys have. And yes, the audio dynamically changes as you move through it, which means they've actually worked on the soundscape. So they have a dynamic soundscape that they've incorporated throughout the aircraft, which means the sounds will change across the aircraft as you move through it. That's very, very exciting stuff. Amir went on to say that they've worked on the little bits of detail that were a lot of hard work. For example, the soundscape changes when you open the cockpit door. The soundscape again changes once you have the cockpit door open and the main one left door open, which is the main front left boarding door that you use to board into the aircraft. You 
you'll hear the outside, you'll hear the APU, you'll hear the brake fans, all of it right from your seat in the flight deck. And everything is going to be realistically simulated. Nothing's too exaggerated, nothing's too little. Everything is going to be the right sounds. Amir has also provided information regarding some of the sounds we're gonna be hearing about the uh, surrounding ground equipment, such as the ground power unit. Yeah, that has its own sound. And yes, the sound actually changes based on the load demanded of it. Now, this is insane. I, I, I don't know about, like, who cares how much load is demanded from a GPU unit at various points in the aircraft sort of preparation cycle. I personally don't, but they've also simulated that in. So that's the kind of sort of, you know, depth and level of detail we're working with here. It's only a prediction of better things to come. Amir has also said that they've gently improved on the virtual cockpit as a whole, which by the way, I found to be a perfectly usable and amazing high 8K textures virtual cockpit from the preview images they've provided, but they've already improved that as well. They've done several passes and nipping and tucking various points to make sure it's where they want it and um, you know it's, it's as, as realistic as it can look. They've also added an entire suite of analog instrumentation, which is completely different from the digital instrumentation we find in the newer models of the A320. They've not just added basic analog instrumentation, they've added digital standby instrumentation. They have a DDRMI, they have an ADI, they have an altimeter. Heck, they even have the metric altimeter. They have all of that built into the simulation. And I'm sure you have, you can use the electronic flight bag or the MCDU menu to be able to change these parameters and the visual parameters of the aircraft to make it look as realistic as possible with the company you're flying the aircraft with. Doing things the Phoenix way, they are not just visual changes, they're complete even with sounds. Yes, an A320 flight deck with a set of analog instruments sounds different to an A320 flight deck with a set of digital instruments. And again, they have incorporated this too. There are gyros and such supporting the ADI and so the soundscape changes quite noticeably and they've incorporated this. So if you're flying an older livery or a company that got maybe a launch customer for an A320 that is still in operation, you're going to be able to sort of understand those things and learn with those analog systems quite noticeably which is very, very exciting as usual. Next up, for all of you livery fans out there, Phoenix has indeed taken your concerns into account as well. So not only are 181 livery packages, including variations available at launch, but the art team pulled out a whopper and also took the time to hand reference each registration they've painted for a rough configuration using the best available data matching their standby configuration at the very least. So for example, if you go for a particular aircraft company or an airline, you will get the right amount of analog instrumentation, the right decals in the cockpit that will make the entire experience of flying that particular company aircraft as realistic as possible. So pretty, pretty cool. Amir has further gone on to say that the airframe you fly will be uniquely configured and changes from flight to flight from airline to airline, all available via their livery manager, which will handle downloading, installing, updating, or deleting these liveries for you. All liveries are available at native 8K, which is amazing, or a downsized 4K version for those wanting to save on the VRAM or disk space. On the latter, they have also built in symbolic linking to the livery manager so you can choose a custom installation folder of your choice, simple and convenient. Finally, let's talk about failure simulation. And this is something completely revolutionary. I've never seen anything like it. Um, a lot of people have been asking that a level of failure simulation where you have to actually choose your own failure is pointless. And if you have to trigger it, the fun in operating the aircraft per reality with a chance for something to fail completely goes out of the window. That's what happens in real life. You don't know if your aircraft is going to fail. It fails spontaneously and then you have to apply your skills as a pilot to be able to solve that failure and land. So the Phoenix team have built that right into the aircraft. The aircraft now features something called mean time between failures modeling, meaning engineering data, real engineering data, ladies and gentlemen, is used to determine rough failure rates and apply that probability to your flight. Since some people have expressed concerns during the beta period with something like this, they also made it a little bit more accessible and fun for those that just want to dip your toes in. So you can choose between a myriad of configurations, such as failing only items that will allow you to continue to your end destination, such as for example, if you get a warning with your barometric pressure or your standard altimeter setting, if you can't change that anymore, you would still be able to continue to your destination. Life will just be a little bit more harder. But for those of you who really want to fail any component, including major ones, that option exists too. So you can get one major engine blowing out and then you have to, you know, divert to a different airport and you have to perform an emergency landing and all of that stuff is now simulated. That being said, you can also have a completely normal flight with normal point to point operations because sometimes if you're in VATSIM and if you don't want any failures happening and pissing off the uh, sort of like air traffic controllers on duty, you don't have to, you know, sort of go with the system of mean time between failures. You can just have a normal uh, combination, whatever your combination is, whatever option you want to go for, whatever type of simulation 
simulation you wanna have when you sit down on that chair to fly this A320, there's an option to suit. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we have for the entire post. And I have to say that I am probably more excited about this aircraft, granted that we already have had so many Airbuses for the simulator and the Boeing was what was lacking and I was excited for the PMDG and I was excited for the MD-80 and stuff like that. This aircraft is probably ushering in a new era for a lot of us flight sim enthusiasts with, you know, persistent failure simulation and low prices. And, you know, they're taking a punt with the community. I think it's our responsibility as, you know, sort of simmers to be able to support a company like this. If they're producing a product that is this good, Go out and purchase it if you can, you know, if you really, if you're looking for a good Airbus simulation, just to show your support to them, just to, you know, um, you know, create an environment that is more conducive to these products coming out, more full products, more products that don't just promise things and don't deliver for a long time, more products that come out uh, amazing and then they improve it after launch. That's the kind of products we want to see in this market. Uh, Amir said uh, at the very end that this was a short post after the long silence they've had ever since the product went into beta, I think two, two and a half months ago, I think that was. But I think all the above information they've provided is enough of the excitement for now. They'll save some of it for the media to come. So you best uh, bet that there's going to be a lot of uh, videos and photos and images that they're going to be releasing on their official Discord. That is also going to be linked down in the description section of this video, along with my own Discord. So join that if you guys want to sort of recommend videos or if you guys want to send me stuff or talk about everything aviation and aerospace. That is an amazing Discord server I have started. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, Amir says consider launch marketing kicked off now so I think launch is going to be imminent I think this aircraft should be gracing our simulators very very shortly I think it's going to be um, maybe end of May probably if not start of June I think they still have to iron out a few wrinkles but um, the way this is going and the way the, 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 the sort of media we've been seeing so far and this update in and of itself I think it's uh, the aircraft is going to be coming sooner rather than later. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also hit that little notification icon so you guys stay notified every time I upload one of these videos and we do another deep dive into another aircraft and you know check out some more Microsoft Flight Simulator news. And uh, for now, thanks for flying by.